Greetings fellow Kerbinauts! This is Nerdy Spaceman and I'm starting a video series on a beginner's guide to Kerbal Space Program. This is going to be all about learning how to play Kerbal Space Program for those of you who have never played it before or just got it and are really bad and just want to get better. This is just, just the perfect video series for you. I'm going to start a new campaign and it is going to be Science Mode because that is the easiest way to play Kerbal Space Program. It is the most educational and it still has a progression without throwing you into the sandbox mode which has everything but also without overwhelming you with funds money like uh, and reputation and all kinds of other stuff you have to worry about in career mode it is a perfect balance so I'm gonna go ahead and click science mode and I'm gonna give myself I don't know the tree flag and I'm gonna call this let's see here let's do science for the win there it is science for the win and we're gonna go ahead and start. Ooh, I have one already. Let's do science. Uh, science explanation point. There it is. Okay. All right. There we go. So, first things first, you gotta know about Kerbal Space Program is that you start off in the Kerbal Space Center. This is extremely important. Every game you start will be here, and then from here you will branch out to whatever it is that you want to do. You are greeted by Gene Kerman, who is actually based off of Gene Kranz, and he was uh, the director for a lot of the Apollo missions. Um, he's based off of uh, Gene Kranz who in the Apollo movies, if you ever saw them, the Apollo movie, he was the guy with the sweater vest and the buzz cut. His wife actually made the sweater vest for him for his missions. It's a cute story. Look it up on Wikipedia. But you agree by him and say thank you. You can read that when you play the game yourself. I'm trying to just get through these videos and introduce everything. First things first, you will notice that the mission control building and the administration buildings are going to be closed. This is because this is science mode and not career mode, so you will not have to worry about your reputation and the funds and how they're coming in, so those buildings are closed. Next up would be the astronaut complex. This is where you hire your Kerbals, and they, they get hired for money that is currently not available in science mode because you're just focused on collecting science. So you can buy as many Kerbals as you want. You also start off with four Kerbals, Jebediah, Bill, Bob, and Valentina, and they come in pilot, engineer, and scientist types. The scientist, Bob Kerman, is going to be our most commonly used Kerbal because scientists give us more science, and because this is science mode, we're totally going to want to do that. More science is better. Anyways, let's go back and let's go visit the tracking station. When you go visit the tracking station, you'll read by Gene again, and you'll be able to see where you are in space. This is the planet, this is Kerbin, this is where all of our Kerbals come from, and you will be launching right from that little area. That's actually where the Kerbal Space Center is. You can't see it from here because it's a little far away, but believe me, you're right there, and that's where you'll start launching. You can uh, change your view using the right mouse button by clicking, holding, and dragging the mouse around. And you can land in anywhere you see. You can land on this river here. You can land in the water if you want. You can land on that mountain over there in the deserts, in the grasslands, in the highlands. You can land anywhere that you see. You can fly there. You can land up in the North Pole if you want to. That's the beauty of this game is you have complete reign over this universe, this tiny little solar system. The mouse wheel lets you zoom out, and when you zoom out, you're greeted by the first neighbor, the moon. The moon is right over there, and this is actually its path, its orbit around Kerbin. When you double click on the moon, it will actually take you to it, and using the mouse wheel, you can scroll in and actually see the moon. And again, you can land in any one of these little craters that you want to. You can land on the hills, on the plains, inside the big crater, inside little crater, inside the big crater, or inside that little mountain, inside the little crater inside the big crater on the moon. Oh, it's crazy. It's wonderful. It's absolutely spectacular. Anyways, you can zoom out some more, and you're greeted by the second neighbor, Minmus. It has an interesting orbit. If you line them up like this, you'll see the moon is perfectly flat on the equator, but Minmus is off at an angle. And you're going to have to learn a little bit of orbital mechanics to get there, but believe me, we will get there soon enough. Zooming out some more, you'll see that we're in a solar system. That will be our path across the sun, and there are other planets that exist. We have nearby asteroids that are going to be flying by Kerbin. They'll generally be safe and harmless, and even if they do hit Kerbin, they won't destroy anything, because the game isn't built around that. What they can do, though, is they have resources on them, 
and you can grab onto them and push them around too. So you can grab one and throw it into orbit around Kerbin and make an orbital refueling station. How cool is that? Anyways, zooming out, you've got the planets Eve, which is equivalent to Venus, Moho, which is like Mercury, Duna, which is like Mars, and inside here is Dress. Dress is like a dwarf planet, Ceres. Ceres is inside the asteroid belt, and it is fairly large. We actually have images available of Ceres because we have a satellite that's currently orbiting around Ceres right now, so you should go check it out. Um, that orbits around here. And Dres actually spawns its own asteroids to simulate the asteroid belt. So you can actually fly out to Dres, find an asteroid near Dres, and drag it back to Kerbin if you want to. That's totally a, an, an option. Zooming out some more, you've got Drool, which is kind of like Jupiter, and Elu, which is kind of like Pluto. Because Pluto has an orbit that actually is on the outside of the solar system, but for a short period of time it is actually closer to the sun. Our sun is called Kerbol and it actually closer to the sun than some of the gas giants. As you can see here, Elu imitates that. But, the cool thing is, is that every, most of these planets have their own satellites, their own moons, and Jules is a perfect example of that. When you double click on that and zoom in with the mouse wheel, you'll be able to see it's got tons of different planets. They come in various shapes and sizes, and my favorite is Lave. You can zoom into that, and this is actually almost the size. It's a little bit smaller, of the planet Kerbin, so you can imagine how big Drool is compared to Kerbin. But the cool thing about this is that it has an atmosphere filled with oxygen, so you can bring a jet here with air intakes and fly it around just like you can fly a jet on Kerbin. Very cool. Every planet has its own stats. You can read info about it, which is just a short little sentence, a short little paragraph for you to enjoy. It also has raw data for you. Things like how much atmosphere is there? What's the height of the atmosphere? What's the gravity of the planet? How many day? How long does it take for a day to happen? And a bunch of other interesting information. You also have laid the resources for each planet, and this will be unlocked much, much later in the tech tree at the very end, where you'll be able to gather resources like ore and convert that into fuel and all kinds of other stuff. So, anyways, enough of that, and let's go back. Now we've gone through most of the buildings, but we haven't gone through the good ones. Um, the runway and the launch pad are currently inoperable until we actually build some craft first, but you build them in the VAB and the SA and the space plane hangar. The space plane hangar builds planes and it's got a different type of symmetry. It's got radial symmetry. And the um or is it yeah, it's got mirror symmetry. And the uh, VAB, the vehicle assembly building, that has got radial symmetry. And I'll explain those later. But first, I'm going to talk about research and development. This is the core aspect of the game. You collect science, and you spend that science to unlock different uh, tech tree parts. And each tech tree part unlocks more parts that you can do to build bigger, better, more efficient, more extravagant rockets. And that is how you progress through the game. And there's a big tech tree. And you have to fly to a bunch of different places to collect enough science to unlock all of these parts. It also has an archives which will tell you the different science you've collected and where you've collected it from because collecting science from the same place over and over doesn't yield you the same science over and over. Once you've collected science from a particular place, if you try to collect more science from that same place with those same instruments, you won't get any more science. So it, the game is requires you to go explore, to go see do new different things. Now, each planet has got multiple different biomes. For example, on Kerbin, we've got grasslands, we've got deserts, we've got mountains, we've got water. We've got a whole bunch of different stuff. So you can visit the same planet multiple times, so long as you visit different parts of that planet. And you can click on Kerbin, it'll unlock the moons, and you can see the different moons. Same with Duna. It's got Ike. Dres doesn't have anyone, but Drool has a whole series of moons that you can visit, and each one's got its own biomes and its own science to collect. And that's a lot of fun. But enough about the science. We don't have any yet, so I say we go get some. We're going to go to the vehicle assembly building. And we're going to be greeted by Werner von Kerman. He is equivalent to, uh, he's a, a tribute to, to Werner von Braun. And he actually got America into space. He was a German scientist and space architect. You can go look him up on Wikipedia. Very interesting stuff. This is the VAB. 
Now, you are locked here, you can't move around, you can't change your camera, you can't zoom in, because you don't have a spaceship yet. The, the best and most efficient way to start a spaceship, and the highly most recommended way, is to start with a pod of some kind. Either a command pod, or a remote control probe, anything that's going to be the source of where the control of the aircraft or the spacecraft comes from. So when you click on that, it immediately unlocks a whole, the buttons become ungrayed, and when you right click and hold you can change the view just like in the map mode. The mouse wheel, same thing as before, instead of going in and out, it goes up and down the rocket because these rockets are going to be tall. And then holding the shift while using the mouse wheel zooms you in and out of the rocket. Now, a little bit about our little pod that we've placed. It places it in the middle of the VAB, but you can always click it with the left mouse and then drag it around and then click again to drop it. And then it's how you change it. For example, if you have a very long rocket and you run out of space below, you can always grab the pod, drag it up, scrolling up, and then dropping it down, and you'll have more space below. You can again click on it and drag it down, and you'll have space below that too. Now, this game automatically puts the craft with its lowest points touching the ground. So even if I start building my craft here and I launch it, it's not going to make me drop that distance. So you're quite alright building your aircraft any which way you want. It's just a matter of space. Now, the interesting thing is, is when you mouse over any one of these, it gives you information. It'll tell you your mass, your crash tolerance, temperature, information like that. And I won't go into detail about it now, it's just you can always go look at that for your own information. When you right click, it generally unlocks even more information for you to dig through. And I will go into details when I build more complicated rockets with each of these things. Well, what you should need to know now in the very beginning is that this crew has a capacity of one. A Kerbal goes in there. We can then go see which Kerbal is in there by tabbing by the c c crew tab. And it'll bring up this menu here with our available crew and the current crew inside. Placing a pod for the first time automatically fills it completely with as many pilots as can fit inside. In this case, it always starts from the top of the list, and Jebediah is always on the top of the list. We can pull him out and put anyone else in, and I'd recommend you put Bob in all of your craft, at least in every launch. This is because Bob is a scientist, and scientists collect more science than pilots or engineers do. So I say, now that we have Bob and his little pod, Let's launch it using this green button over here. Now the reason I'm launching right away without anything attached under this crew pod is I want to show you guys how to collect science. It is the core aspect of the game, and since we haven't collected any science, we can start from why not the launch pad. When you right click on the command pod, you'll be given several options and buttons to press, but the one we're most interested in right now is the crew report. When you click on that, it'll give you a menu. This is how you collect science. You can drag it. And every single science equipment that you have is going to give you this type of window. You're going to have three options. You can either reset the experiment, erasing all data that you've collected, or you can keep the experiment or transmit it. It is not recommended that you transmit experiments unless there's no way to come back to the planet. If you're stuck in orbit and you still want to keep your science, then it would, then it would be wise to transmit it. But almost always keeping the data yields more science than transmitting it does. So for now, we're going to keep that data. You can at any point review that data by clicking on this button right below the crew report, and it will tell you that same thing. Careful not to reset the experiment because then you will lose all the data there. So every time you review, review data, always keep it after you're done reviewing it. Because you could always review it and transmit it later when you realize that you cannot return the craft. Now that we have that, we can hop out and do some science on the ground. Now this is Bob. Bob can do an EVA. That's in this button over here. That means extra extravehicular activity, meaning you can go outside of the pod and do science out there. Clicking the EVA button hops us out, and then we can climb down using the arrow keys, push space to let go, and then continue using the arrow keys or the WASD keys to move around. The arrow keys actually change your camera. I just keep saying the WASD, but the arrow keys change your camera, but the WASD are the movement controls. Q and E also control movement, but that'll be more complicated movement that I'll talk about later. Here is Bob. You can right click on Bob and you can take different types of experiments. We've got surface samples, 
and we've got EVA reports. When you click on two multiple experiments at the same time, it will give you little arrows here that you can cycle through the experiments. And here you can see them. And again, they're both surface sample from the launch pad. Now, the reason I'm pointing at launch pad is because the launch pad is its own biome. I could walk off of the launch pad and go into the grasslands out there, and it'll say EVA report from the grasslands. It'll be a completely different type of science. And then I can collect it by keeping both of these, and it'll store them on my person and on Bob here, and I can review them, or I can walk back to my craft, and I can right click on that, and I can store them into the craft. Storing is extremely essential because if I collect, if I, a, if I take a surface sample, for example, and I keep it, and I try to take another surface sample, it's going to tell me that it wants to overwrite. Now, I don't want to overwrite it. I want to collect multiple surface samples, so I will right click on the crew pod and store it into it to collect multiple experiments. And that is extremely important for getting enough science permission. You're maximizing your effects. Instead of launching multiple rockets and collecting science one at a time, you can collect multiple. Now, since I already have a launch pad science surface sample, I can review the sample and reset it, and it will get rid of it, clearing up some space. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and F to grab onto the pod, and I'm going to walk up the ladder a little bit. You don't need to, but I like to. And then B boards you back into the pod, and then you can recover the vessel. This will give you the option to now collect all your science, and we have the science from the launch pad, from surface sample, EVA report, and a crew report. We can then kick the next button, and then done, and we have now gathered that much science. We can go over to the R&D building, and we can unlock science for five research points, and then we can do here for another five, and that is going to be basic rocketry and engineering 101, and that unlocks a bunch of cool stuff for us to make bigger rockets, and I will talk about that in the next episode. This has been Nerdy Spaceman. Stay safe and fly far.